I see so many people with utopian visions of wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great? And, and you know, they have a vision for making the world a better place. Uh, you, those of you watching this, have a vision for making the world a better place. And I have you know, been a, an, a fan, an enthusiast, a supporter, a contributor to various utopian movements over the years. And inevitably, I always come across, well, it's, we come across, but why doesn't it work out? Human nature. And essentially, like the, the core, the core of what I'm trying to say here is like, if you want to change the world, you got to first get fucking organized with yourself. Like, that's it. Like, it's like, it's like, and of course, I'm biased, because, you know, the core of what I do is joyful productivity. But I, that, and so therefore, if, 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 if I have a hammer, everything's a nail, right? So, so therefore, from my perspective, if everyone just got really good with the joyful productivity, that's when we can have utopia. It's like the reason why various movements don't work out, and not just movements, but teachers, you know, um, various, various teachers like, like ourselves um, can't build a movement. It's because we don't have the fucking spreadsheets and don't know how to use them. Or I don't care if it's spreadsheets. I don't care if you like spreadsheets or not. But it's like we don't have our our fucking calendars and to-do lists and emails are all over the place. It's like, we can't find stuff. This is why the world is the way it is. I mean, and this is why government is so inefficient. It's like, you know, government, you know, like governments are a bunch of, not just government, corporations, companies, organizations, families. I mean, this, right. It's like, this is why the world is a fucking mess because we can't clear our email inbox on a daily basis. And we can't, we get overwhelmed with our to-do list when we don't have to be, when we just take everything step by step. Obviously, um, you know, this is glib for me to say uh, because if there's a lot involved and there's a lot of, a lot of, and everything, there's so much involved here. You know, there's also trauma background that creates overwhelm for people and people are, um, have difficulty therefore because of their backgrounds and regulating their nervous system and, and, and therefore maybe they're freaked out by spreadsheets or lists of items because of their background and trauma, trauma recovery. There's a lot involved, of course, I understand. But the people teaching trauma recovery then, the people teaching regulation of nervous systems then need to get fucking organized with their, with their spreadsheets and with their to-do list and with their calendars so that they can be really organized for their students and their clients so that we can all be healed. And therefore we can all be not freak out when we look at a to-do list or a calendar or have our emails cleared so that we can get stuff done the way that is unique to us. I mean, and, and so, I mean, I've worked, with, I've worked with so many business partners over the years and just again and again, I see two problems. I mean, two core problems. One is just most people aren't, aren't joyfully, most people don't have their productivity systems created and optimized. And, and therefore, there, you know, so many of us are a mess and overwhelmed all the time when we don't have to be, when, we, when there are ways to get over that. You know, like there are ways, that's my joyful productivity mission. It's my TLC mission, right? It's TLC Thoughtful Life Calendar. It's to, it's to help all of us get fucking organized and like clear and not overwhelmed anymore because we're so clear about what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. That's part one. And part two is to actually show up on a day now that we've got our system, now we've got our calendar, now we've got our to-do list, now we've got emails cleared to actually show up day-to-day, -to, -day to actually follow our calendar without freaking out and with joy and to do our to-do list items, you know, I, I was thinking today, you know, this is something I'm going to start saying more and more. In my work, sometimes I get to do what I love. The rest of the time, I get to love what I do. That's it. I mean, how much do I get to do what I love? Actually, it's a minority of my day. I mean, right now I'm doing what I love, ranting. I love this stuff. I mean, I can rant all day long, as you probably know. <laughs> you know, I love ranting. And, I, and, I, and, and when I have my materials all prepared, I love teaching. And I love talking to clients. But that's, not, that's the minority of my day. The rest of my day are doing things that could possibly freak me out, like writing. I don't like writing. It freaks me out. 
but I have learned to try to love the process and I keep, keep trying to love the process. And the first 15 minutes, I have to really work hard at loving the writing process, the first 15 to 30 minutes. And then I see something come together. I'm like, oh, yeah, this might actually help somebody. <laughs> this might actually make sense to somebody more than me, you know, um, or I'm, I know, whatever. I've got lots of things I do during the day that isn't something I'm naturally energized by, but I learned to love what I, so that's the joyful product. That's a joyful part of the productivity, right? Joyful part of the joyful. So like, first you got to get your productivity systems squared away and actually, you know, humming along. And then you've got to do the, the, the you got to actually show up every day for your productivity system with joy. And actually there's a third part I want to talk about, which is leadership, you know, and Eric uh, and Jason and, you know, Mira and Julie, I mean, all of you, Tara, I mean, you all know, well, you all talk to people about this stuff. Um, I'm talking, those of you watching this later, I have no idea who I'm talking to. I'm talking to just a couple of, couple of you who are here live with me right now as I'm ranting. So thank you for, for your patience. But, but the third thing is leadership. Like I see so many, I mean, as we all know, right? So many spiritual teachers um, are not spiritual to, to the people closest to them, you know, and, and, and they break down because they don't know how to handle fame um, in a very truly spiritual way, wise way. They don't know how to handle praise, um, you know, and, and inappropriate relationships with their followers, whatever, you know, there's lots of things and, or, or, you know, whether we're talking, yeah, there's inappropriate can be said in a lot of ways, whether it's, you know, sexual or whether it's anger or whether it's um, not being patient with their, with, with, with their students and their, you know, followers, or whatever. It's, a, it's like the leadership part of it. It's like so many people get famous too quickly and therefore haven't developed the wisdom, Eric, right? the wisdom heart, <laughs> uh, to be able to lead uh, in a wise way. So anyway, th that's my three-step recipe for utopia. Everyone get their fucking to-do list and calendar set, okay? <laughs> and then secondly, learn how to show up every day with joy to love what, to love what you do if you can't do what you love yet. 100%. And even if I think, I, I don't know if anybody ever 100% ends up, you know, has a business that where 100% of the time they're doing what they love. I don't, I don't know of anybody like that. If they are, maybe, maybe they're not telling the truth because, okay, fine. Maybe you have unlimited amounts of money and you have this huge team, but still you have to then manage the team. And that's not always fun. <laughs> right? So anyway, productivity, the joyful part of showing up every day, and then the leadership of dealing with people with grace and with wisdom and, you know, not drinking the Kool-Aid of all the praise um, and also learning how to deal with criticism and getting and being open to feedback and then changing and, and modifying our, our behavior and our, our patterns. There you go. Utopia. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> And thank you, Mira, Mira Rao um, wrote in the chat. Uh, this is literally a quote from a client of mine, Mira said, I didn't realize that it would take so much organization to have the life you want. Mira says, I've been wanting to do a post on it. Please do a post on it, you know, and then comment below this video. Uh, I'd love to see it. Um, and Mira also wrote, is very regulating for clients if the coach is reliable. 100%, 100%. I mean, I, I see... So many people around me, and it's like they are, yeah, I, 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 just, I just assumed that everybody is always on time for their clients and, and always never like cancels things. And I'm always surprised when I work with business partners or collaborators, I'm like people sometimes don't show up or they can't. I'm like, really? Like, isn't that 101 of being a business owner is you always show up for every appointment that you set? I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. Um, and I, 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 I guess because I've been so lucky that the beginning of my business career was about productivity, I've had 12 years of practicing this stuff. And so therefore, you know, that's the, the, the curse of knowledge, right? The curse of the expert is that I now assume that everybody is joyfully productive all the time. And that's not always true. It's usually not true. Uh, but anyway, so thanks for, thanks for listening.